Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about chromatic medians. Let's start by looking at the C major scale. There are seven notes total and these are all diatonic, meaning they belong to the key of C major. They all have names as well. For example, the third scale degree, the note E, is called the median. The word median stands for three because the interval distance from the note C up to the note E is a major third. The sixth scale degree, the note A, is called the submedian. The interval distance from C down to A is a minor third. Now, if we have a look at the chords of C major, you see that the scale degrees and the chords have the exact same naming convention. So we can think of the chord E minor as our median chord and the chord of A minor as our submedian chord. Okay, now we know what the word median means. Now let's talk about what chromatic means. Chromatic is any note or chord that does not appear in your key. Diatonic means in the key. Chromatic means not in the key. This means that a chromatic median is any chord not in your tonic key and is based on either the three chord or the six chord. Chromatic means not in the key. Median means the three or six chord. In any major key, you have six primary options for a chromatic median. Three for an altered median chord, and three for an altered submedian chord. Three based on E minor, and three based on A minor. And to be honest, the easiest way to remember these six options for chromatic medians is to just memorize them. And let's start off by looking at the three options for E minor. The first chromatic median chord is an E major chord. This chord has the note G sharp, which is chromatic in the key of C major. If E minor is our minor three, then E major is our major three chord. Here's an example of how this sounds in a progression. Another option is an E flat major chord. This has two chromatic notes, E flat and B flat. This is what's called a flat three chord. Here's what that sounds like. And the final option for E minor is an E flat minor chord, and every note is chromatic. This chord is E minor one half step down. Now let's go over the options for our submediate chord, which is A minor. And while the notes are changing, the chord functions are exactly the same as the three we just went over. The first one is an A major chord, where C sharp is our chromatic note. The next chromatic median option is A flat major, where the notes A flat and E flat are chromatic. And finally, we have an A flat minor chord where all three notes are chromatic. A flat minor is one half step down from A minor. And this next section is on borrowed chords. You may be familiar with borrowed chords which is when you are in a major key and you use chords from the parallel minor. These are the chords in C major, and these are the chords in C minor. And if you notice, we have a flat three chord and a flat six chord, which are two of our chromatic median options that we went over. 
You can think of these two chords as chromatic medians, or you can think of them as borrowed chords. To me, it's not really a huge deal what you call them, but I did want to point it out in case you ever come across it, if you're reading a lesson or watching a video or whatever, and you see a borrowed chord and it talks about a flat three or flat six chord, or you see a chromatic median and you see it's flat three, whatever, just know that a flat three chord and a flat six chord is both a borrowed chord and a chromatic median. And again, in the terms of analysis, especially if it's just for yourself, it doesn't really matter what you call them. Just recognize that it's a chromatic chord from outside the key. With that said, not all of those chords in the parallel minor are chromatic medians. Only the three and the six chord are chromatic medians because remember, those are our median and submedian chords. If we look at the chords of a major key and the chords of a minor key, in the minor key, the flat seven, for example, is not a chromatic median, but it is a borrowed chord. They can both be used in composing. They can both be used concurrently in progressions. You can use borrowed chords. You can use chromatic medians. I did want to point out that you will see both oftentimes in the same piece of music, which goes right into our next section where we're going to look at a real world example, and that is the Lord of the Rings theme. You may have heard that chromatic medians are used in film and video game soundtracks, and that's because these chords create such a unique sound when used. Now let's look at the Lord of the Rings theme, and we'll listen to the example and then break it down. Here are the chords of D major. The minor three chord is F sharp minor, and the minor six chord is B minor. The Lord of the Rings theme uses two chromatic medians, the flat three chord F major and the flat six chord B flat major. It also uses a borrowed chord, the flat seven chord C major. This comes from the parallel minor D minor. And referring back to the borrowed chord section, you can see how using chromatic medians and borrowed chords sounds totally fine and is used all the time. All right, for a fun experiment, we're going to look at how impactful these chords can be by listening to the theme again, but this time it's going to be all diatonic chords in D major. There's going to be no chromatic medians, no borrowed chords, everything is in D major. And as a heads up, it's going to sound a little weird but I think it's a good example on how introducing these chords into your music can really make a big impact. Now, how do we use these in our music? You know I'm a big advocate for experimentation. My recommendation would be whenever you're writing a chord progression, try using chromatic medians and see what kind of sounds you can get. Over time, you'll get used to how each chord sounds and you'll be able to use them more efficiently. And in the earlier examples, I was essentially substituting chromatic medians, but I was doing that for the sake of demonstration. But another good way to think of these chords is in a deliberate sense. These aren't really chord substitutions, but rather chords that can stand on their own and be useful tools for composing music. Here's an example I wrote that uses some chromatic medians so you can see how they sound in an original piece.
And that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this crash course on uh, chromatic mediants. The next video in this little two-part series is chromatic mediants in a minor key. So stick around for that, and I will see you next time.